So <laughs> why don't we jump into the first big topic today? Uh, that's the rumor that Samsung's upcoming SoC is up to three times graphically faster than the Snapdragon 865. This is so exciting because do you remember like, man, what was it like 10 years ago, five years ago, eight years ago? I don't remember when it was, but the the big PC companies used to be pretty into the whole mobility thing. You know, Intel had their X scale processors, like going back to when I was, so when I was running the painting business, this has been like, I don't know, 15 years ago or something like that. Like you could get like 500 megahertz, you know, Intel X scale processors that ran in like, PDAs and I forget what ATI ATI like X Xeon or something ATI mobile graphics uh, X something man I can't remember someone's gotta someone's gotta help me out um, ATI like handheld graphics ah I don't remember but uh, they were I Imagion Imagion that's it. So ATI had their Imagion thing going on. Uh, so when was this? Imagion uh, products. Oh, come on. Give me a year. Give me a year. The Imagion line was rebranded under AMD and sold to Qualcomm in 2009. So AMD was into it, actually sold that technology to Qualcomm, and then has just not been in the game. Well, a lot has happened in the last, you know, uh, 11 years. And there's no doubt whatsoever that NVIDIA and AMD are the leaders when it comes to graphics. Um, so the fact that, you know, however many hundreds of millions of smartphones out there are running graphics chipsets that are not made by NVIDIA or AMD is like, it's kind of mind blowing, right? Because all this performance for all these years has been left on the table, whether it's due to, uh, you know, licensing or whether it's due to, you know, patents that these companies hold that others just can't use, even if they did think of it. Um, and uh, I, I'm just I'm just really excited because you like you look at what has happened when someone who really knows graphics like an NVIDIA has gone in and tried to make a graphic centric mobile chip like a Tegra. The, the NVIDIA Shield was so far ahead in gaming performance from what anyone else could do at the time. And it didn't take off because honestly, I think a big part of Shield's problem, I'm talking like Shield Portable, the handheld gaming yeah. system, was that yeah. it was just <clears throat> so far ahead of its time. And to a lesser extent, the Shield tablet as well. Like mobile gaming. A lot gaming. of the Shield things in general, to be honest. Yep. Actually, a lot of a lot of Nvidia's uh, mobile graphics uh, endeavors. Do you remember what were they calling them? Super phones, I think was something, their yeah, branding for it. Yeah, I think it was super phones. Yeah, yeah, I think that was about nine years ago. Nvidia came up with the concept of a super phone, which was going to be a regular phone, but like with better graphics. And Nvidia, they're not the best when it comes to sharing, you know. <laughs> Um, so I think the stumbling block they ran into there was that instead of licensing the tech, they wanted to build the whole processor themselves and do phones and phones just, it's such a different game. They just had, they clearly had no idea what they were doing. And by the time they could get a product to market, it had been leapfrogged once or even twice by the guys who were iterating their phones much faster. And everything was moving so fast. Uh, processor speed was moving at warp speed. Uh, display quality was changing by leaps and bounds every generation. Camera quality, leaps and bounds, same thing. So they, they, just, they just couldn't make it work. But I think if they came back and tried to tackle it again, they might be in a better position. Hard to say. Sorry, I feel it's, like I talked a lot. <laughs> No, regardless, it's really nice to have them back in the field. AMD and Intel were both kind of in this space before, as you mentioned, and it it almost feels like they both kind of bowed out. Um, yep. And we had a while there, not way too long back, where it was basically just one company, and now we're spreading back into more, which is which is great. Uh, I don't know, more more competition is good. I'm happy. Um, so just uh, to give you guys the scoop on what's going on, so AMD and Samsung announced a mobile GPU partnership in mid-2019, and early reports show that that may be bearing pretty uh, awesome fruit. So a poster on South Korean tech forum 
Klien states that Samsung and AMD's in-house Radeon-based GPU, quote, crushed, unquote, Qualcomm's Adreno 650 in a GFX bench test scoring 181.8 FPS on the Manhattan 3.1 test. That's less impressive, but could also be CPU bound. Remember, uh, Samsung is still going to be using the same ARM based cores that Qualcomm will. So you're not going to see in a CPU bound test a, a super significant difference in performance. But more impressively, uh, we saw 138 <laughs> FPS on Aztec Normal. So that's more than double what an Adreno 650 would do, and just about 60 FPS on Aztec High, which is almost triple an Adreno 650. So when it comes to a high fidelity mobile gaming, where you're not CPU bound and you're you're really you're able to crank up details, so whether it's a shadow detail or anti-aliasing or whatever the case may be, uh, this kind of GPU horsepower could be a total total game changer. And what's cool is that, okay, maybe you're not into the next Galaxy phone running an Exynos processor because uh, maybe, you, uh, maybe you, you're an iPhone person or maybe you're you know, a, a OnePlus person or, or whatever, who cares? Or maybe you're just unlucky enough to live in a region where Samsung doesn't ship Exynos and they ship Snapdragon instead. Um, your luck will have changed if that's the case, because typically it's been lucky to be in a Snapdragon region, not the other way around. But... <laughs> um, Okay, maybe you don't care about the particular device that this article is about, but AMD graphics in mobile could be a movement, is what I'm trying to say. Like, it's going to make its way into Samsung's tablets as well. And so maybe that kind of graphical horsepower isn't necessary for a phone, but on a tablet or on something, you know, more akin to like an Android based gaming device, kind of like a Nintendo Switch, like a dockable. Uh, you know, controller docking gaming device. Uh, it's just good news. Absolutely good news all around. What do you think this would do for mobile gaming? Because like, there, there's clearly a lot of mobile gamers right now, but yep. most of the games that they're playing, uh, they already, like when, when things are still, yeah. they already look pretty good. Yes. Most of the action is like super canned sequence like you, you put one input and then your character does a whole bunch of stuff and then resets back to their position. Like it's it's not very uh, live rendered type of type of gameplay. And a lot of the gameplay is a little uh, sorry, mobile gamer bros, but it's a little empty uh, because they're just trying to get your money. Do you think this could change the types of games that are made for mobile? To me, there's uh, a few things this means. There's going to be a long lead time on anything significant changing because if I'm a mobile Definitely. game development company, I'm targeting the broadest possible audience. Oh, yeah. So yep. on iOS, that means Candy Cooker. anything that is on Apple's uh, still supported device list, I'm going to make sure that thing runs A-OK -okay on it. Uh, Android, I mean, that's why you see Android games that still run on like Android 6, right? <laughs> like. Um, you, you want as many people as possible to be able to play your game. But in the very long term, I mean, you're going to get all the usual benefits. You're going to get better graphical fidelity, obviously, because anytime the industry gets a big push forward, that forces others to play catch up. And then once that hardware is all out there, I mean, game developers, yeah, some of the people who work at game developers are horrible suits who are just out to extract as much money through microtransactions from whales as they possibly can. But a lot of the people who work at mobile game developers are artists too, and they're going to try and take advantage of the hardware that's out there. So I think you're going to get better looking games. Another advantage is you're going, if it doesn't look better, it's going to use less of the resources. So you could see better power consumption. Like right. maybe okay. Samsung yeah. takes this, this early test because we're not even expecting a device until uh, Samsung's successor to the Exynos 990 in 2021. Like maybe Samsung takes this early test and goes, hey, we actually don't even need all this performance to be competitive. Let's ratchet the power consumption way down, make this thing crazy efficient. Maybe you're gaming on your phone for six, seven hours of screen time because of technology like this, right? That is one thing, uh, like like these, these tests, they don't talk about power consumption or thermals at all. Yeah. Um, so it, it did perform extremely well, um, but we don't know necessarily how well it does in the other arenas. Um, the other thing that I see potentially happening, and this is pure speculation on my part, 
But if AMD is in this partnership with Samsung, it means AMD is learning a lot about how far down they can scale their RDNA, uh, what is it, RDNA 2 is what this one is supposed to be based on. Unfortunately, it's not in my notes. Oh, yes, it is RDNA based. So what they're, they're learning a lot about how they can scale RDNA. And what that tells me is that that knowledge that they're gaining through this partnership could potentially be applied elsewhere. Um, as far as I can tell, NVIDIA has been pretty foot draggy on their mobile GPUs because they basically have no competition in the space. But if all of a sudden AMD came along and was like, you know what, it's not good enough for us to have Microsoft and Sony locked down. Why don't we make another play for Nintendo? If AMD is learning enough about RDNA and how it scales down, you know, maybe we see a more powerful switch. And then maybe NVIDIA responds because they want to win it back in the next generation. So this just means better technology for consumers moving forward. The more players there are in a space, the less likely you are to have an incumbent just sitting there twiddling their fingers because nobody's around to compete. So I'm excited. There you go. Yeah, that's good. I mean, anything that pushes that space forward is good because um, it would be cool if mobile games were actually like good and fun and stuff. This is spectacular. <laughs> Did you see this in the notes? What? Imagine uh, Adreno, the uh, the the name for for Qualcomm's uh, onboard oh graphics, is an anagram of Radeon because it is based on the Imagion intellectual property. Here I was trying to remember that it was called Imagion. It's actually in my notes down at the very bottom. That's hilarious. I totally did not realize That's that. Pretty great. Yeah, I had no idea. All right. Um, but yeah, like, and, and something that I would also like, and this is maybe uh, painting me be a boomer to a certain degree, but whatever, um, is okay, one boomer. thing that we saw a little bit like a year, year and a half ago, I think, yeah. were ports of like console and PC games coming to mobile phones. And they they just sell them for whatever amount of money. And it's not a microtransaction thing. It's like a one-time purchase of the game. I know they did that with a Star Wars game and a couple other mm -hmm. things. More of that, if the phones have more graphical power, could be a pretty cool way to just like cruise around in some game that you're nostalgic about on your phone while you're bored. 